All right. Can you see it now? Yes, we can see it finally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what technical problems is happening there, but anyway, uh, thank you everybody for your patience. Uh, so I'll start again. My name is Nick Barrowman. I'm a statistician at the Clinical Research Unit of the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario Research Institute in Ottawa, Canada. And today I'm going to talk about my R package vTree and how it can be used to find hidden patterns in clinical data. So there are two parts to my talk. And in the first part, I'm going to show the components of vTree that let you draw a consort flow diagram. Uh, that'll introduce a bunch of the different features that uh, vTree has. And then in part two, I'll look at data exploration with vTree and how, uh, how some of these uh, features uh, play out and let you hopefully find hidden patterns. So uh, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the consort diagram. So for randomized controlled trials, uh, the uh, randomized controlled trials are generally considered to be the gold standard of clinical evidence. Um, in order for a randomized controlled trial to, uh, to fulfill its promise, uh, it has to both be done well and be reported well. And so CONSORT, which is the Consolidated Standards of Reporting Trials, is all about the reporting. And a key feature is the CONSORT diagram like this, which I'll, I'll get into a little bit more in a minute. I'm going to give as an example um, the oral antiviral drug Paxlovid, which is used to treat COVID. In fact, it was used uh, to treat President Biden. Uh, quite recently. And also recently in the New England Journal of Medicine, there was a trial of Paxlovid that was published. And here is the consort flow diagram for, pardon me, for, um, for that Paxlovid trial. And you can see how patients are followed all the way from eligibility assessment through randomization into one of two groups. And along the way, there are some exclusions, discontinuations, and a total number followed up. As I was preparing this talk, and, and I thought, oh, this is a, a timely example, I noticed there's actually an error in this diagram. Whoops, my sharing went away. I'm going to try that again. Pardon me. All right, I noticed that there was an error in the diagram. And here's the error. There were 2,396 patients assessed for eligibility and uh, 137 of them were excluded uh, and then 2,246 underwent randomization. But if you look at those numbers, they don't add up, right? So 2,396 minus 137, well, that gives 2,259, not 2,246. So there are 13 patients who weren't accounted for in this diagram. And I don't know exactly what uh, the issue was, whether it was just a misprint or if there were 13 patients, it's hard to say. Uh, what I'm gonna uh, do is just take away 13 from the 2396. So what I did was I created a uh, data frame and I gave it 2383 rows and then all the numbers work out. Um, but I, I mean, the, the point I do want to make here is that a uh, reproducible method of producing a consort flow diagram, uh, and not just, not just labeling uh, blocks uh, uh, in a picture, but actually computing the, the values, a reproducible method is very important to avoid errors like this. So I made up this data set with 2,383 rows. Each row represents a patient, and then you have the different columns for randomization, true or false, and then different exclusion re reasons, the group assigned, and so forth. So if you look at the first row in this uh, data set, uh, you see this patient was not randomized, and the reason was because of exclusion reason number two. There's no group, just a missing value for group because they weren't randomized and so forth. So now let's consider a single layer tree. Um, we could just use the base R function table to get frequencies, uh, 137 that were not randomized, uh, 2246 that were randomized. Um, 
if you used vtree instead, uh, and, and I just want to point out, you specify the variable in quotation marks, and you'll see why a little bit later, uh, then you get the same numbers, 137, 22, 46. You also get percentages and uh, a colorful diagram. Um, if we go to a two-layer tree, you can see what the colors are all about, just to help you see what's what in the diagram. Um, now we've got group in there as well, and we've separated the variable rand and the variable group by a space inside quotes just to make it convenient um, and uh, you note the number uh, of those randomized the numbers number that received paxlovid versus the number that received placebo but you also see the missing values and this is a, a strength of vtree is it will always show you the missing values except in this case we actually want that node to go away because it's not telling us anything interesting and that's why we might want to use pruning. So in a pruning step, um, and I, there, there are several ways in vtree to do pruning. In this case, I've used the follow command. And follow says only follow below the node true for randomization. So it doesn't follow below false. And that gets rid of the missing uh, value node. But there are other ways to do pruning in, in vtree. Now let's go to a three layer tree where we also include follow up and follow up. Um, now we can see what happened um, or, or how many of the patients who received Paxlovid were followed up or not. The ones who weren't followed up uh, discontinued for various reasons. Now to, I mean, this already gives us a, a good deal of what's going on in the consort diagram, but to actually get into the reasons for exclusions and so forth, we're gonna need another tool in Vitri and that Oh, I'm sorry, I've skipped a step here. I just want to point out uh, that what I've done here, I've used a, uh, there's a parameter called label node that lets me replace sort of trues and falses with more informative names like excluded or randomized. And if you look uh, up here, it says show var names equals false compared to the previous page. Um, oopsie. In the previous page, uh, the previous slide, I had the variable names appearing, and that's helpful when you're building the tree. But uh, once you've labeled the nodes, um, uh, excluded equals false, randomized equals true, and discontinued trial equals false, followed up equals true, then you don't need the variable names anymore. So I was, uh, I was just about on the previous slide to say that if we want to look at the reasons for the exclusions and the discontinuations, you need another parameter, and that's called summary. The summary parameter lets you display information about other variables within a subset of uh, the, uh, the data, within a node of the variable tree. And so uh, here, for example, I've got, um, well, actually, this is the general structure of the summary string. We specify a variable name and a format string, and the format string consists of text and special codes. So, for example, how many patients were excluded because they didn't meet eligibility criteria EXC1, that's, that's one of the variables. So I specify EXC1 and then this string, and it also has a special code for, to compute the sum. And if you do that for the consort diagram, it produces did not meet eligibility criteria 124. When you do that for all the different eligibility and discontinuation criteria, it gets a little bit lengthy, as you can see here with the summary command. Um, but then you can get a more detailed uh, consort diagram. I've done a few other things. I've turned off the colors and various other things. But basically, it's a fairly, fairly, uh, you know, short command, despite, despite all this uh, stuff about the summaries. And it gives you all the information you need. You see the reasons for the exclusions. Uh, and for the discontinuations. And of note, if you look in the Paxlovid group, there were no deaths out of 1,120 patients randomized to the Paxlovid treatment. In the placebo group, there were 13 deaths out of 1,126. So it's uh, it's pretty striking. So that's that's roughly how you can produce a consort diagram in Vitri. It doesn't have the kind of rectangular look of the classic consort diagram, but it's fully reproducible and uh, it can be used as you update data from your trial um, or you correct errors and so forth. And again, it is reproducible. So now I want to move on to part two, uh, data exploration. And um, 
the point is that the tools that uh, I, I incorporated into Vitri so I could do flow diagrams like consort, uh, it was kind of an added bonus that they can be really useful for data exploration. In my experience, people often have data sets, but they, they just don't really know what's inside the data set. So what do they do? They open up a sort of a spreadsheet view of the data set and they look around and they might see a few things, but it's hard to see patterns if you do that. So Vitri is a, a simple tool that lets you um, explore patterns in your data. And uh, uh, I think it's uh, it's an example of, of a, a, the tool that people have been missing. Instead of just looking at your data and hoping to get some insights, you can actually uh, have a structured way of looking at your data. And so I'm going to illustrate this with a retrospective cohort study. It's a data set from the medical data package in our and it con concerns patients who are being treated um, with a bone marrow stem cell transplant. And it's about the risk of cytomegalovirus or CMV reactivation in these patients. So my data set has 64, um, 64 rows, so 64 patients and 26 columns. I'm gonna start by looking at frequencies. These are the diagnoses and I'm using this special uh, setting pattern equals true which in this case just lets me order the diagnoses from the bottom, the most frequent ones, up to the top, the least frequent ones. I'm just going to, as an intermediate step, I'm going to relabel things a little bit because the data set just had, say, ones and zeros for male and female and so forth. And now I'm going to look at another pattern tree. This time I've got multiple variables. I'm looking at sex. I'm looking at a genotype variable. So they're heterozygous or homozygous. And then also whether they received radiation uh, prior to the transplant. And again, they're ordered from the least freak or sorry, the most frequent at the bottom to the least frequent at the top. So this lets you look at combinations of values. The most frequent pattern here is male heterozygous, no radiation. Now I'm going to look at the same three variables in a kind of a standard V tree uh, format, standard variable tree format. And I've got, uh, so sex, the genotype variable and prior radiation, but I'm going to look at the primary outcome here in this study, which is CMV reactivation. And I'm going to let capital R represent the proportion of patients who experienced uh, reactivation. You can see overall 41% experienced reactivation, but it was 53% in females, 29% in males. And then you can look at within females and males, the uh, heterozygous or homozygous groups. And then uh, uh, further, you can go on to look at radiation. And I'll just point out, if you look at radiation within these groups, uh, the uh, no radiation group always has uh, a higher reactivation rate. So 18% compared to 0%, 79% compared to 75 and so on. So that's an example. I mean, there are many, many more uh, examples I would love to show you, but inevitably uh, there's not enough time and uh, we'd have to get into to more details. I, there is one final thing I do want to show you, which is, what can you do with quantitative variables? Um, although Vitri focuses on discrete variables, it can display summaries of quantitative variables. In this study, the primary risk factor of interest was the number of activating killer immunoglobulin-like receptors or acres, at least that's how I pronounce it. They were especially interested in a low number of acres versus a higher number of acres. And um, we can start by using the summary uh, command to just look at the mean number of acres in groups. So overall, the mean was 2.8, standard deviation 1.7. But when you look at those where there was not reactivation, the mean was 3.1, whereas it, it was only 2.4 in those where there was reactivation. So that kind of shows off the um, kind of the relationship, but it's it's a little bit back to front. So maybe we should look at this dichotomized comparison, but how do we do that? Well, and this, this relates a bit to how I said, look, we put the variable in quotes because I've got this expression here where I said acres greater than or equal to five. So that dichotomizes the quantitative variable acres into just 
the two groups, the less than five, where the proportion reactivated is 48% and greater than or equal to five, where the proportion reactivated is just 19%. So that uh, shows it off nicely. So that uh, brings me to the end of my talk. And uh, once again, I apologize for the uh, technical snafus at the beginning. Um, Vtree is available on CRAN and uh, yeah, check it out there. Also, I have a web page set up uh, right here and uh, there's lots of resources there, including a draft paper, which is currently under review. Uh, so you can take a look at that. My co-author is Richard Webster on that paper. And I also want to acknowledge Sebastian Gatcha, who um, added shiny bindings to Vitri. All right, thanks very much. And if there's time for questions, I'd love to take them. <laughs>